chainsaw cs 400 we're gonna be putting a new card kit fuel lines etc uh check out some other videos i got links to uh i'll put them up here at the end several other of these videos but we want to get a kit in this can't get it to fire it has spark so it's a carburetor issue and uh we'll go over that in a second so here's the saw guys we're gonna be putting this kit that i got today on there i'm gonna get my camera set up and we'll get started Okay, so we're suffering a carburetor issue, and rather than buying a new carburetor or a carburetor kit for $15, $20, I found these little kits on eBay. They're aftermarket. It is what it is. But for $12, bucks, we got a carburetor, we got fuel lines, a new fuel filter, a vent, a new air filter to replace that one. Um, we got an extra fuel filter. A couple extra grommets here. Carburetor gaskets. And a second spare vent. A spark plug and carburetor adjustment screwdriver. So for 12 bucks, I couldn't even order the the diaphragm and the gaskets for this thing for that price so I went ahead and went with it they seem to work pretty good with my other two videos I've done they fixed both of my issues and they seem to work first thing we're going to do is take this air cleaner off this one's a little shorter but it is the same diaphragm or di diaphragm diameter so it looks like it'll work fine, um, but actually this is brand new. So I'm gonna put this on my Echo 4, 440. They are the same filter, which is nice. So we got that off. We're gonna have to get this top cover off. Grab my cordless. We're gonna pop this cover off. This particular saw, if you're doing this particular saw, it's uh, three bolts. Two of which I can't get my bit down into. So we're going to remove them with a manual screwdriver. everything exposed here so we're gonna have to get our carburetor out there's two screws back here that I can see that hold it in so first what we're gonna do is get the fuel lines and the kill switch unplug get all that stuff out of our way it'll make uh, our job a little easier we got some needle nose pliers here we're gonna detach the uh, switch you kind of want to make sure you watch as you're going the smaller of the two plugs on my saw is going to be it's got a bigger jacket the smaller goes to the outside things like that you might want to take a photograph of or write it down so you remember 
All right, so I got a few lines here. I'm gonna pop those off of the primer bulb. So now we can almost get this plate out of the way, but we are gonna have to remove the it's a throttle linkage. A screw right here on this saw that we're going to take out. It's straight up and down between the throttle linkage and your air filter cage. Get that out of there and that will help you bring the carburetor up so we can actually loosen it now. Two screws like so. And there it is, guys. That is your carburetor. Okay, so we're going to unhook the rest of these fuel lines. Now all we have is the... This will come off of there now. All we have now is the choke. And the throttle linkage, which are hooked up on the right hand side. So it's just a matter of twisting the carb in the direction of the little kink, and that linkage will pop right out, and the choke pops out. Remove the remainder of the fuel lines, and there's your carburetor. This aftermarket is an exact match which is really nice. <laughs> like I said, for 12 bucks, you really can't beat it. I mean, yeah, hey, if it, if it don't work in three years, hey, what's another 12 bucks, right? So I'm gonna save these carburetors, it's a Walboro. I'm gonna save these old carbs. I've got a couple more over here from a saw, or a weed eater and another saw. So I'm gonna save all them, clean them up, and keep them for parts. Now, normally I would replace these fuel lines. Thing is, I actually already did a couple of weeks ago when I tried to get this saw going. But we'll go through it real quick. There is a grommet. It's going to be this size. If you happen to order a kit like I did, one of these aftermarket kits, this giant grommet will not fit. It's going to be the smaller one. I guess that's why they give it to you. This kit did list a couple different saws that it fits. But that grommet is right here so you're going to want to pop that out with a flat blade screwdriver a pair of channel locks or of, uh, needle nose pliers so we can get that out of the way now and the choke and you can get to that quite a bit easier with all that stuff removed and you run your new fuel lines this one actually is two lines that run down through there so I don't even think that grommet would work, to be honest with you, because this one only has two lines that run down through there. This saw actually does not have a vent like some of the other saws. This here, the saw does not have that. So anyway, there's two fuel lines run down through your grommet. And it's all a matter of replacing the carburetor at this point. So we're going to install this the way it came out. We just have to attach our choke, throttle, get all that hooked back up. Then we'll reattach our lines, reinstall this. All right, this just slides in there, like so. All right, so I'm gonna take my throttle linkage first. And this throttle linkage runs back to your trigger. And there's actually a, all right, we gotta wiggle it in right there. You want to put this in before you put your carburetor in 
because the angle of the carburetor will not allow that to be hooked up without being bent. Okay. That's on. Now I'm just going to kind of hold it in the spot where it was where it's supposed to be and just test it to make sure my throttle is working. And it is. Now we want to get our choke and hook it up. It actually goes under this black plate right there. Get it in there and hook it back up to the butterfly. I'll give you a shot of that in just a second here. All right. So there's the choke and the butterfly or the throttle hooked to the little butterflies. And you'll want to test, like I said, the throttle. But we'll get that carburetor. Like if I can do it with one hand here, I'll try to show you. You want to test that like so. Just to make sure it's working. I'm having trouble doing it with one hand, folks. So let me try to show you here. And you can see the throttle is moving. Okay, so we got that on. We're going to slide our fuel line right there on the top and hook it up. Like I said, these are new lines, so I'm not worried about that. We've got one that goes down underneath. And then this one will hook in to the side, like so. Make sure you get those all the way on there. You don't want gas leaking while you're sawing. All right, I'm gonna give you a shot of those. You can see that fuel line there goes into here. There's one in the top, and then that one that goes down under right there. So that's pretty simple. So now that we got that on, we're going to see if we can get our plate here. Make sure when you do the throttle on this saw, this particular model, if you can see right there, has these little black tabs that stick out. You want to get your throttle rod right between there. It's kind of a guide to keep your throttle rod from bouncing around. Keeps fuel lines out of the way, stuff like that. So now you're going to want to take your carburetor, just gently tilt it forward, and get your bolt started. This one you can pull out of there, it makes it a little easier. And slide those bolts in. Easier said than done, there we go. Whoop, hang on folks. We got uh, a little ahead of ourselves here. Got a gasket we're going to put on there. This old gasket on here, honestly, it doesn't look too bad. Now I'm not sure if I'm even going to use it. This gasket's in pretty good shape. It's not, it's thicker. It's, it feels like the material is a little better, so I'm just going to leave that one on there. Honestly, it's a, if it was creating an issue, we'll replace it later, but I don't think it's going to. It doesn't have any tears or anything in it. I wish I'd left it on there because I gotta readjust it. Okay. So what we're gonna do is get these lined up. And this might take a minute to line these up, so I'm gonna pause this so it doesn't get too long. Okay, we got those lined up. Tighten them gently with the cordless. Now we're just gonna tighten them up with the screwdriver so we don't over tighten and strip them. Alright, now that last bolt that goes straight in. I'm going to put that down in here, 
just going to use a screwdriver, it's less bulky. This takes a second. Alright, so we got that in there now. I did see that my little spark plug boot came off earlier. Alright. So now that that's all on there, we'll check our throttle. Throttle's working. Check our choke. Choke is working. Okay, so everything looks good. Everything's lined up. Alright, so we have one thing left to do here. Hang on just a second. Okay, I got a little ahead of myself. <laughs> this fuel line that goes down and under, I'm going to pop it off. It uh, goes to your primer bulb. No biggie. Quick fix. Push that off of there. This fuel line will go over your primer bulb. I got just a bit ahead of myself there. Okay. Now, the fuel line that was extra that I was like, wait a minute, where does that go? This goes from your primer bulb to the underneath. Alright, I'm going to have to fish that onto there. Just lift this up, makes it a lot easier. Like so. Now I just need to reroute it underneath my throttle cable or throttle linkage. Like so. Now I just have to get it under there and get it on the carburetor. Alright, so while I do that, I'll pause it. We'll show you all the fuel line routes and uh, put some fuel in this thing and get it all put back together and fire it up. Alright, so to make that easier, I've just loosened my carburetor up again so we can get this fuel line hooked up. If you pre-watch this video, like I normally do before I work on something, uh, make sure you get those lines on before you tighten the carburetor back down. Otherwise, you're going to be, it's just a pain in the butt trying to reach down in there. It was easier just to loosen the carb again. So, you got the fuel line that runs here. That's your vent off your carburetor. It runs down in here. This one comes from your fuel tank to the side of the carb. The fuel tank to the primer bulb, primer bulb to the base of the carburetor down there. So you want to get all them installed. It just makes everything a little easier before you uh, tighten the carburetor down. Otherwise, it's going to be a pain in the butt fidgeting down in there. So once again, I'm going to line this gasket up, get this tightened back down. Okay, now from a bird's eye view here, once again, we got the fuel line down here. goes to the primer bulb. Primer bulb to the tank and then tank over to here and then we want to make sure our throttle is in our slot and working which we have it working fine the choke you can see down in here the choke is working so everything is in its proper position everything has room just make sure you don't have anything bound up in there Alright, now that we got all that on, we're going to reattach our wires, a little clip there that hooks to your spark plug wire, kind of keeps everything together. Now this big clip goes on the inside, like before, I'm not sure if it matters, probably doesn't, but you get it in its original spot and you won't have any issues. Nothing like your saw running and then won't shut off, but this probably just grounds it and kills it, so there we go. Those are hooked back up. There's a little slot right here that they go through. Make sure you get them in that. You don't want them pinched right there. Okay, so now that we got that done, we're going to go ahead and install the plug.
this kit did come with a plug but I have an NGK already that I plan on using so we're just going to use that we'll save that plug for a spare throw it in our uh, bag with our chains and whatnot bars this is a NGK for this saw BPM R7A you can also get some others that will fit this this is an auto light it replaces several NGK numbers champion numbers this is a 2974 All right, so now we got our plug in. I'm gonna tighten it down. Nice and snug, not too tight. Now all that's left is put our cover on. Pull your plug wire through. It's gonna be knocked our little boot off. All right, get that down in there. All right, so now we got this little rubber boot. Probably should just put it on here. It'll make it lots easier, like so. Do that first. And you're not fishing in there with pliers and needle nose trying to get it straight. All right. And we'll get our plug wire snapped in there, popped onto our plug. Retighten tighten the three screws. back on all right I'm gonna pause you real quick while I run off and get some fuel put in this thing and we'll come back and see if it works all right we got some fuel in here we got the primer bulb pumped a couple times we got fuel in the bulb if we want we can pop this off and just double check make sure in our lines down in there we have circulation and the fuel is circulating I'll give you another bird's eye shot of that you can see these lines right in here we need to get some light on them you can see the uh, fuel circulate in those lines see the bubbles So all that's left is to fire it up. All right, guys, so we're doing a little flashback. I want to make sure everybody's clear. The left side of the primer bulb, that hose goes to the bottom of that carburetor. The right side will be going back to your tank. And then the fuel line from underneath in the tank with a filter goes over here. And then this line is your cylinder drain goes down into there to the bottom of your cylinder um, and if you want to replace that vent I got this diagram over here I'll show you that I'm not going to replace it but it's down inside of the hole under the trigger guard if you decide to replace that I'm not going to in this video I don't see any point those vents usually don't go bad so now what we're going to do is get our air cleaner on our air cleaner cover all right we got fuel we got everything hooked up now we're going to go out and do a test fire 
All right, so it's incredibly windy, so I'm going to talk close to the camera here. Um, we've already primed it, so I'm not going to prime it anymore. I don't want to flood the carburetor, so we're just going to choke it and see if we can get it to fire. Sounds like the high speed might need a little bit of an adjustment. Okay, I started the saw and I turned the high speed counterclockwise about a quarter of a turn and it started to bog even more. So I went back to the original setting and then I went about a quarter of a turn clockwise. So that sounds good guys, we're going to leave it there and uh, adjust it in the future if needed. There's your high and low, got that handy screwdriver, it worked really nice. Alright guys, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, hope you enjoyed the video, hope this helps you guys out. Somebody's got one of these that uh, needs to put a carburetor on it or get it running again. So appreciate you watching, hit that like, hit that subscribe, thank you. Guys, in the last part of that video you might have noticed I forgot this. <laughs> there we go all done sometimes you get uh, focused on what you're saying and not what you're doing later